Hi there everyone, welcome back to Objectivity. We have a very special guest today. We have Professor Sir Martin Polyakov, who some of you may know from periodic videos. I've been filming him for many, many years. Now, Professor Polyakov, besides being in YouTube videos, is a chemistry professor and also has been Foreign Secretary of the Royal Society for five years. He's just coming to the end of yes. your term. Five years yes. in the job. Can you imagine what that must be like? Yeah. That's nothing because the longest serving foreign secretary of the Royal Society is that man behind us, very famous scientist. This is Thomas Young, and that's the person that we're going to talk about today, a fellow scientist and a fellow yeah. foreign secretary. Yes. And my great hero, because he was such a good foreign secretary. Now, Professor, clearly I don't have to introduce hey. you to Keith, because here's a little secret, viewers. It was actually Martin that introduced me and Keith. Keith, what are we going to show Professor Polyakov today? Well, this is probably one of the most famous papers we have in the collection. This is Thomas Young's Bakerian lecture on the theory of light and colours. Uh, this is Young challenging Sir Isaac Newton. Good Lord. So this, wow. is, this is because Newton thought that light was particles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Young's coming along and saying, I think it's waves. Yeah. That's right, yeah. So this was read in 1801 and he gives a synopsis of work on light and colours up to that point. So he talks about Newton and Hooke and Huygens and so on. And at the end, past all these hypotheses, he presents a rather beautiful figure to illustrate his lecture. So yeah. a very, very long meeting uh, at that time. Would you give a lecture this long, Professor? I know no, you like to no, keep no, them no, short. No, 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 <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't have the patience. <laughs> So here we have, well, this is pretty iconic imagery, this is, isn't it? So this is diffraction at a slit. That's right, yes. That's fantastic. But it's interesting, the diagram is really nice and beautifully written, but the other stuff is full of crossings out and so on. Yes, so it would have been revised right up to the point of giving the reading yeah. and then into publication because it would have gone into the philosophical transaction. Yeah. So lots of changes of mind there. Does this have any emotional effect on you or is this just sort of business as well, usual? Well, of course it does. But on the other hand, I'm always surprised how badly things were written down. I'd always imagined that in the old days, people wrote with beautiful copper plate handwriting with no mistakes and so on. But this is full of mistakes. If a student handed this to me nowadays, I'd tell them to do it again. It looks such a mess. I've seen the professor's handwriting. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone, <laughs> I say. My handwriting is beautiful. All right. <laughs> Professor, just quickly moving away from the science for a second and talking about foreign secretary. I mean, all these years ago, the Royal Society has a foreign secretary. It still has one in you for a little bit longer. Yes. What's the point of that job? What do you do? Well, in those days, you had to sit here or rather in the building they had then and write to scientists overseas and wait for the answers. Nowadays, it's still a dialogue, but it's not so much about the science, at least in my role as Foreign Secretary, but it is about interactions on policy issues, climate change. It's very much more discussions about the science that is needed to make policy decisions. And now almost everything is done in English, though I have had quite a few meetings in Russian. As you probably know, Thomas Young apart from being able to speak I don't know how many languages, was one of the first people to decipher Egyptian hieroglyphics. So he was turning the theory of light on its head and at the same time working on Egyptian hieroglyphics. Your mention of all these letters and languages, it's almost like you knew what was coming next. <laughs> because what have we got here, Keith? We have another very interesting collection of letters here. What's, what's this all about? Well, this is a group of letters presented to the Royal Society in memory of Thomas Young by his wife in 1855. And it's a selection of some of the great names he was in communication with. Uh, and you can see them on the front there. Berzelius is who Swedish chemist invented the terms catalysis and organic chemistry. He was my great, 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 I don't know how many greats, grandfather scientifically. So right. my supervisor was somebody else's student and so on. And you go all the way back and you get to Berzelius. And there's another name here that we both and know. Mm -hmm. There's Wollaston who discovered several new elements, including palladium. Now, a lot of these appear to be in a foreign tongue. That's right. So it's a group of letters from a variety of people. 
So this is a Berzelius letter from mm -hmm. Stockholm. It's in French. Most likely, yes. Swedish, not, not a language generally understood outside. French yeah. was far more a Central European language. But this is interesting. It's 1812 in December, so it's while Napoleon was retreating from Moscow. So <laughs> though perhaps Berzelius didn't know that he was retreating. There's a nice little piece of gossip in the back end of this letter. So Bezalius writes to Young. Young drafts a reply here. He's talking about Davy, and this is Sir Humphrey Davy, how he managed to get the job at Dr. Beddoe's Pneumatic Institute in Bristol. So that, that's quite a nice little snatch of, of chemistry gossip, gossip there. And that's in English, is it? It's in English, yes. Gosh. I have been, as Foreign Secretary, giving quite a few of my notes and things to Keith to put in the archive. So there will be at least some trace of me, even if you can't read my emails. I know some future day, some virtual Brady and Keith will be describing them online, no doubt. So there's one thing that I've done better than Thomas Young. Go on then. Is that he died at the age of 58, and I've lived longer than he has. Well, it's funny you should say that, because people, in the next objectivity, we're going to have Professor Polyakov again, and we're going to have a very interesting story about how a foreign secretary met his demise. Oh. So stay tuned for that one. <laughs> <laughs> they often break down the limbs of oaks with their weight and leave their dung some inches thick under the trees they roost on. Where they light, they so effectually clear the woods of acorns and other mast that the hogs that come after them to the detriment of the planters fare very poorly. So you can already see why people are getting a bit cross with these pigeons.